bring it. Yeah, if, if Benji was into kombucha, we'd have a, we'd have an intern scavenger hunt right now. I, I want an kombucha. energy drink from Cambodia. I need Could you zinc, send an intern? Zinc pills and energy shots. I still don't understand. What is an energy shot? Like, is it a small? Yeah, it's one of those like cocaine. Yeah. But, but what is it? It's just caffeine. But, Three of uh, three of our interns are in Eritrea getting yeah. gambuki. <laughs> what is it called? All right, thank you very much. Can't for I, I well, it brings um, up a question I always had at, at here. Um, what, what's out of bounds with the interns and what isn't? I've always wondered. Am I allowed? Well, you to can't ask have them, them get your you cocaine or her. Well, no, I, I, oral sex. I asked one guy that, and I catch shit for it. All right, listen. Don't, I, I want to drop the topic if you don't mind. No, of course. I just. You know, uh, I think everyone knows what's in bounds and what's out of bounds. Right. It's I not mean, even I, interesting. I, yeah, I think you know. Benj, if you if if you did it this way for a while, you'll find that you'll have more leeway. Yeah. You know. All right. Hey, let's not get them riled up, and let's not start again. Yeah, I, 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 I'm tired of making rules. You know, it's a funny thing. Uh, somebody sent me this tape from the Adam Carolla radio show. A uh, friend of the show, Norm McDonald, the guy I like very much, was on Adam Carolla show. Talk about again another person who thinks I should be daddy. Um. He went on Adam's show and sort of made some comments. And, you know, this is Norm. Maybe he's trying to be funny or something. I don't know. But oh, what about me? About, about Artie, about how I oh, no. am killing Artie or something. Oh. You know, it's like, it's like, and I listen to it. And, you know, I, I, I respect Norm, and I think Norm's a bright guy. Norm's coming in here in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I would always but listen. you don't uh, respect this particular opinion. No. I, can tell I, like, I, can... I like Norm very much, but i got to be honest with you, I... Uh, here, I'll play you the clip. I can tell if he's trying to be funny. Other, I don't time. think he was. I don't think he was really trying well, to be funny. Well, everybody can tell when he's trying to be funny. Here's Norm. Um, no, no way. <laughs> Norm McDonald talking about how the Stern Show enables Artie. But here it is. Mm. I'll play it for you. Norm, what else can we talk about? Uh, we did Celebrity Millionaire. Your show coming ah, up? Ah, here's one. Artie Lang. Artie, yeah. You're friends yeah. with Artie. I'm very good friends. Anyway, well, I mean, I mean, yeah. Well, we're going to open I, the newspaper I, I, or turn on the uh, computer. Norm didn't seem to be able to handle whether or not he's good yeah, friends. Yeah, he doesn't even know if he's a good friend. Well, it probably means uh, Norm hasn't really been a good friend to Artie lately. Right. You know, Norm is uh, uh, probably not a guy who really still hangs out with Artie. Well, he lives in L.A., and I'm uh, here. But, uh, okay. We talk but, on but the phone. He, he was unable to really articulate. Yeah, he didn't know what he is. Right, he was like, or one of these mornings and find out that Artie is not with us anymore. Yes? Well, I hope not. He recently went into rehab again, I think. Well, it's outpatient. Outpatient. So I don't know what that even means, but I hope... You know, I hope he does good. I don't know. You know, I don't. It's a very tough position because it's a guy who has problems. We all know guys who have problems, you know? Right. You worked with a guy who knows a whole bunch of guys that have problems. Sure. Kimmel. <laughs> oh, yeah, Dr. Drew. Yeah, Dr. Drew. Sure. And so, uh, so you know, it's tough and everything. But anyway, he's in a certain position where it seems like the whole, because I went to see his show, you know, mm -hmm. his stand-up show. Yeah. People just hand him Jägermeister all the time, drinks. So it's like the, his whole uh, show is enabling him and his whole audience is enabling him. The lifestyle is not him. conducive with sobriety. No, it's terrible. It's really... Also, it's you know, and not only are drugs available when your celebrity people give them to you, but also... I would have been a cokehead too if I got two thousand dollars an hour to do construction back in the eighties. Right. And instead, I got nine dollars an hour, and I was like, I'm not going to buy a gram of coke for 110 bucks when I'm not making 110 bucks in a day. Exactly. So he's got the money. Also, his character. His comic character, <laughs> yes, <laughs> is that of a drug using, dr heavy drinking guy that's going to die. Right. Right. So right. how does he go on as a comedian without <laughs> yeah. that persona? Yeah, I told him be a rehab guy. Just you know, call yourself the rehab guy, and it'd be but funny. nothing is more tedious. But you know the thing. No, but at least he'd live. Yeah. I personally, I don't like. I don't like that what they're doing on Stern to him. What are they yeah, doing? I, I mean, obviously he's complicit in it, but I'm saying that. Uh, uh, he doesn't have to be Beetlejuice, or he doesn't have to be. They, you know, there was they had a midget on that show that was drunk and died. Really, yeah, you know? I remember Hank. A Hank, yeah. yeah. And, and they were telling him, "Hey, drink more, drink, drink." So drink. you think they're uh -uh. enabling him? Of course they are. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's for the good of the show, you know. It's I mean? entertaining. I, mean, I know Howard. I love a train wreck is entertaining. Yeah, you know, Howard's a fantastic guy. It's uh, going to be awesome when I'm at his wedding in two weeks, and he's like. <laughs> 
of my one of my callers told me uh, what Norm said on the show. <laughs> I'm an able and I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go. I didn't say anything. And yeah. yeah, but you laughed and yeah. nodded. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be that way. He's gonna tell you. Well, I guess that. he is in the in the outpatient <laughs> rehab, so maybe they're trying You're to. You're gonna help go. Him. Hey, Norm said. Uh, yeah. Oh <laughs> hell, I sing like a canary. <laughs> hey, guess what he did to his best friend's <laughs> wife. <laughs> So anyway, I listened to that, and I Jesus. said, you know, um, I, uh, here's my response to it. Uh, and, and here was most of the response on Stern Fan Network, which somebody sent me a copy of, that uh, Artie is a grown man. Absolutely. Uh, number one, uh, if Norm thinks that I have some sort of weird control over Artie, um, I don't. And the same way that Norm employed uh, Artie. Let me let me just finish this. Never Artie to drink or Never. do drugs though. I've, I've, I I don't care if Artie drinks or does drugs in the sense that I need that for my show. I if worked, Artie was I a here, sober. Where, the first four years I right. worked here, I I hardly drank. As a matter of fact, I was in a very yeah. healthy time for me, and this show all, had nothing to do with me getting out of that. Artie, Artie I was welcome here every morning. Artie's a be, funny guy. I'm not. I don't. I don't create a persona for Artie that you'll be the drunken slob on the air who has to take coke and i didn't create that either uh, purposely by the number way. two if norm <laughs> if norm wants to get down to it norm has worked with a lot of people who've who, died who have died and he did nothing and number two because no well, one expected him to do anything number two uh, yeah, okay. I'll norm mcdonald on. and i'll say this to him when he comes in and i like norm but uh, he's misguided uh also i will say to norm that uh norm employed Artie. Uh, by the way, Artie played him in the movie a drunken, crazy guy. You know, on, no, uh, no. whatever your character I, I, I was. I wasn't. No, I wasn't right. drunken crazy. Yeah, this he hired Artie. Artie tried to get coke Artie was into. Artie fresh out of rehab. Tried and, and fresh out of rehab, Artie tried to get coke into. I forget the whole story. Well, Rob he was Saget. trying to score coke the night they met. That's right. And Norm did nothing. Norm did nothing. He hired him and put him in the movie. Right. And just, because, just don't try to bring it across the border. Right. And in the same way that Norm employed him, I would not, uh, I would not castigate or chastise Norm McDonald for employing Artie while Artie had a cocaine problem. But he did. I don't know what it is that he wants me to do for Artie, but I believe Artie's a grown man and Listen, Artie will do what he needs. Can I to say do. something? Please. Sure. Uh, look, I. I uh... I think you care about me as much as a family member does. I think Norm cares about me as much as a family member does. And I, it's very awkward and terrible for me to hear you two at odds on any level about it. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. I just don't like that. What, Norm said something that I agree is probably out of line. Right. And you're responding to it. I yeah, think, and you I know, think Norm, I'm responding to it in a fair way. And, yeah. And, I mean, look, right. and uh, when Norm gets in here, he'll respond to it however, you know, you guys will talk. Hmm. But um, I... Uh, I, I would do, like. I what do I'm know say that to Norm. Norm uh, I, I, what, but all right, what I'm going to say to Norm is, Norm, you tell me what to do. You want me to fire Artie? Is that what you? Yeah, is but, that what you're suggesting? <laughs> you want me to fire Artie? I said I love Artie. But I love working with Artie. But we the same thing with Bob Saget. They seem to yeah. all be laying it at our feet. <laughs> Yeah, because it's like it's not, like with Benji. I've got a, I've got a, you know, it's like they want me to step in and be daddy. I'm, I'm not. They don't want to be daddy. Artie's a we grown man. Artie's a, I'm not, a very I'm, capable guy. Right, I'm not, and I'm not asking you to do that. Of course, nor would I ever ask you to do that. I, um, I'd be there for if you. Or Artie's an out of control child. I don't know. If, if you said to me, Howard, <laughs> I need to go into rehab for right. two months or so. I would, be, I would, I would, I would give you a hug and say, "Is there anything I can do to help?" Right. I, um, I understand that. I, you know, I and again, I'm, the you. first few years I worked here, I had probably with some of the healthiest years of my life yes. uh, with no partying, and I just showed up and I was able to be funny and everything was fine. Why don't we fine. get credit for that? Uh, but, but, and, and again, uh, you know, I, I don't like that too, because uh, I care for you and I care for Norm. Norm's I'm not like, mad at Norm. Norm's sorry. like an older brother to me. Yeah. And. Um, to me too. Norm, Norm <laughs> <laughs> you might be right. Yeah. The, um... I think that dude's hitting sixty. <laughs> no. By the way, where has Norm been? What is going on with his career? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's... yeah, maybe he needs an intervention. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I did, look, Norm is again. He's one of the funniest guys I, I I've ever met. But he um. He got to know me at a time when I do know. He got to know you at a time when you had a gambling problem. Who was right at your side gambling with you? Well, Norm. You know, right? But Thank I mean, you. we both. <laughs> Norm is Norm is the biggest enabler, enabler on the planet. You see, but I, I don't, I don't think that's true of him either, and I, oh, I don't think it's true of you. Gambling with an addict. Uh, but I, I think he's as much of an enabler to me as you are. I'm no, responsible for I my know, own I'm thing. 
Uh, and and he, I know, like, people don't realize this, but Dirty Work was Chris Farley's last film. It's the last one he made. He died two months after we Norm died. right there on the Don't scene. <laughs> what did he do about it? Not he tried bang. everything. He tried everything. Yeah. He really did. Well, who doesn't? Which, which he really did. What? But, what but, did but he try? What did he try? He put tried. him in a movie. No. He <laughs> shouldn't have let him on the what movie set. What did he try? I need to know what it is they, they do he that tried, we're not doing. He tried to help him. He tried to get him in, in, in some I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm not comparing that to this. I'm not. Please I'm not. Tell me what he did. I'm telling you why I think Norm is extra sensitive to this shit and why what he said is misguided. I think what he said is misguided. It's oh, not. Right. It's not. I'm not comparing you guys to that. Right. Uh, Chris was very uh, and uh, and Norm were close and that that hurt him. So I think he's so far in, in, into that mindset that he's saying stuff that, quite frankly, is not fair to you. Right. And that's totally how I feel about it. I also know it's probably difficult for him to say that because. Uh, I mean, one of the things me and Norm bonded wa on was a fondness of this show and you right. and your abilities as a performer. And um, <laughs> so it's probably hard for him to uh, to say that stuff. Right. But he thinks in some way he's helping me. I'm saying he's not. Yeah. I'm saying it's, 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 it's on my own person. I'm not going to fucking go out and do coke because I think you want me to. I Look, I'm in rehab. Right. I did a gig the other night completely sober. It went fine. I did an hour and a half. Everything's fine. That's what I heard. I he, heard you didn't have a drink over the weekend. People laugh. Right. I got Did my... they try to give you drinks or anything? It was at a theater, so no. no. But uh, yeah, people. But you know, it's like I can say no to it. Right. And uh, my check cleared, and everything's fine. Yeah, you know? there you go. All and, right. uh, well, I thought I'd play that for you just so you knew. I, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. He, yeah. he said that. Yeah. I, and I'm sorry he has that opinion. I'm glad he's coming in here so you guys could talk. Norm is a great man. He's a great friend of mine, and you are too, Howard. And you guys care for me, and I know that. Right. I know, and, and, and uh, uh, well, I just want to go on record as uh, responding to him. I'm not mad. I'm not, I'm not um, mad at him. And I don't record. feel that about you. With not no. even an iota of, and neither do my fa my family. Believe me, if my my mother thinks you guys are the best thing in my life, and I, she, you know what I mean. And I, think I know that. I've spoken true. to you. Well, I've, let's just say I've not spoken directly to your mother about this, but I've heard through the grapevine right. that she's very, very right. appreciative of, of the course. situation. Of course, my sister feels that way. My Dana that. felt that way. And people close to me feel that way. Right. Norm isn't as close to me anymore, which is a shame because we don't well, talk we as heard much. That. Well, yeah. we don't talk I can tell much. because he was confused when when <laughs> they said, "Oh, you're Believe a good me, friend of Artie's." He, 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 <laughs> good friend, give him a call if you're so worried right. about. Him. I call him. He calls me. Yeah. We talk about once a month, but um, he's he, so uh, worried about you. He calls you once a month. <laughs> All right, listen, I see you every day. Yeah, uh, I know. Well, we work together, yeah. and I'm glad to see you every day. But yeah. also, also, when I when I didn't go to the Hank in that whole thing is ridiculous. Yeah, we met Hank. Hank was on death's door. That's and right. Hank quite was frankly, drinking years before we uh, ever met. What we did for Hank, which okay. people didn't know, is Doug Goodstein was directly involved with Hank. Not and too much Doug, was like, <laughs> yeah, Doug is probably the biggest heart of gold on this show. I worked with Hank and tried several times to get Hank hospitalized, mm -hmm. to put him in rehabs, and Hank wanted none of it. But, you know, say what you will, uh, Norm doesn't know me and doesn't know anything about our show and how it operates and how it runs. And really, uh, it was unfair of him to say that. But I'll tell him that when I see him. I, and, and I agree. And I think, you know, Norm, though, is not an enabler either. I, I'm taking responsibility right. for me. That's what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. that, that no one else has to deal with that. Believe right. me. Least of all, you guys. The only way you're going to get dig yourself out of this hole is to take responsibility. What, what, is, what is it I could do to you? And what, what, I should take away your job? Howard, you sat me down. You gave me the number of a guy. I mean, this is, you know, I, I have to do that when I'm ready to do it. Right. You know, it's like... But, you know, Not for, according the, to Norm. No, no, Norm says he can. Let, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? When Norm comes in, I'm going to have him tell us what to do, and then we'll right, do it. Right, right. Well, that's exactly what he said. He's got, uh, Norm, you got, uh, I don't know when you come in, in a couple of weeks. you got a couple of weeks to think about it. Come up with a program, and we'll hear what it is. Can't wait. I don't want anybody coming up with a program. Mm -hmm. for me. My program mm -hmm. is I just want to keep working. I have to keep working, and I'll be right. fine working. I'm with you. When I'm working, I'm fine. I, and, Artie, please go out and get drunk tonight, because you, you're not funny enough, and uh, we need you to get drunk and drunker and drunker. By the way, and, because uh, you're not being your character. Yeah. I think most people most people who come up to me seem to enjoy me on the show. They think I'm funny on the show. And I've you been, are. I've been drunk on the show four times out of 2,000. <laughs> we all got drunk together. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know what sucks about this business? You know, you get in the show business and you hope that you get some attention from people. And it really, people concentrate on the negative all the time. Right. You know, it's like, all right, well. Well, we'll, we'll talk to Norm in a couple of weeks, I hope. Let him come in here and uh, confront me on this. I would be happy to talk about it. It would be an interesting show. It would be very interesting to hear the thoughts of Norm MacDonald.
who, uh, by the way, several people said to me, who is Norm McDonald? Oh. <laughs> no offense when I brought this up. You see, the there's reason. hostility here. I wish no, way. no hostility. I like Norm. Norm knows I like it. And I know who Norm is. I'm a fan of Norm's. You know Norm. I mean, true, the sitcom didn't work out. and. The got actually, fired off the Saturday Night Live, and sitcom, I'm not sure what he's doing now, but uh, you know, the sitcom was on for two and a half years. That bought that bought me a house. The second right. one was there. On you go. Six there you go. Good for him. Anyway, uh, you loved him on Saturday Night Live. I did. I was a big fan, and I still am. I wish they would do something. <laughs> you know. Besides, figure out what to do about you. He can't go back to Saturday Night Live? He's got plenty of free time. He could be calling Artie more than once a month if he's so concerned. True. What's he so busy with? Well, Nothing. I don't, I don't need him. What are we, broads? I don't need to talk to him every day. Exactly. He's so, such a good friend. He's your best friend. He's a good friend. Yes. He is. I know. You're a good friend. Thank you. How and you're you a good friend. About? And thank you. <laughs> thank you. And, and Benji, I... I'm sorry, I haven't changed my mind. You get two orders a day. That's it. It's more than enough time. And may I say thank you. Right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, that was a good first. That was a good Monday morning opener right there. I got so pissed off. I, I rented some movies this weekend. And, uh, what? Yeah, so he just thinks I'm some retard that can't be the fucking infant. <laughs> <laughs> he he's tall. He's, t he's a tall kid. Yeah, he's, playing, yeah. he's playing basketball. He's you're playing b-ball, baby. You're not It'd playing... be good to have him out there with Artie shoot and see how he does. You're not playing poker at all? You're not playing... Because you love to well, play, play high stakes poker. You play the friendly poker. games, right? Come on. I try not to. I'm really? Not, I still play a little poker, I have to admit, but... Did you, get, did you go to therapy for this? I mean, was there some sort of... No, what do you think I'm you? I don't uh, do that shit. You don't need to do any of that. You won't talk to anyone. <laughs> Right? You're, too, you're above that. that you're shit. too good for that shit, right, man? Right? <laughs> Why do you keep putting the phrase in that way? What do you mean? What do you say? What? I said I'm not good enough. Yeah. To to. You you know, I'll tell you what, this is what happened with me with a psychiatrist once. I think this is why I don't do it anymore. Uh, you did go to a psychiatrist. When I was a young man, I yes. was like 17 or was a trouble, trouble kid, and uh, they sent me to a psychiatrist. All right. And I talked to the guy, and uh, <laughs> I talked to him twice, right? Right. Next week, he fucking commits suicide. <laughs> Is that true? So it's in the paper that I'm reading about the guy's the worst fucking life ever. Like a <laughs> coke and a yeah, you know, I, I mean, uh, I shouldn't say the worst, but, you know, just the worst fucking life. And I, I felt so bad because here I am yammering to him on his last week of life about, ah, I'm a, God, my mother. You, know, so. you were labeled as a, you must have acted out in some way. Did you get arrested? You've gone to psychiatrist. Oh, I'm in there four days a week now. Well, what the fuck are you asking? Me, why, why? I'm asking you at 17, what led them to put you in a, a, you said you were a troubled child. How old are you? Right now, 54. And you're going to a psychiatrist four days a week? Three days now. Three I'm days three a week? Days. Yeah. I'm 17, I go one fucking time, I'm the guy that's <laughs> fucked up? <laughs> All right, listen. You, you got to give your head a shake. Listen, I was shocked. Hey, what do you think of that, man? I was thinking of using that as my... Uh, tagline? Tagline, yeah. yeah. For a comedy? I like it. Hey, give your head a shake. <laughs> like do the you... guy who says hamburger at the end. <laughs> you know that guy? Who's the, the guy funniest who's motherfucker like ever. No. There's a black guy. His entire act, at the end, he goes, hamburger. I just, you don't miss the movies. You don't miss Saturday Night Live. Mm. You do, Mr. I do Saturday Night Live, yeah. You do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this. Saturday Night Live. Chevy Chase was in here recently. He didn't say it on my show, but I read it somewhere. He said the only guy who ever did the news right since I left was Norm McDonald. Did oh, you know really? that? Really? Did you know he yeah, said that? Yeah, I heard that. Oh, you did hear that? Yeah, I heard that. I heard you have that framed on your wall. Is that true? No, I didn't. It is not true. Okay. It. What are you you don't give a fuck what anyone says. <laughs> Chevy always... Chase didn't remember me. I... <laughs> oh, no, are you kidding? I swear to God. <laughs> it's me, Shapoo, I know. I know. I know. Well, I mean, listen, you know. <laughs> He remembered Chevy, you. He don't remember. Chevy me. remembers you. He doesn't he, remember working with Artie. No. He, he got up and he said, "Nice to meet you." Artie <laughs> said, "We work together." He goes, "Really? When?" Yeah. What film? What film was that? The midget film? <laughs> I said, "Dirty work." You know what happened with Chevy when he was on? Because he was having trouble with you. Because you would phone him and wake him up and all that shit. We yeah. were not friends back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, I told right. him. I said, Chevy. Fucking phone Howard and just if you like him, he'll like you. It's over. That's it. And now we're friends. We're the best yeah, of friends now. That's how yeah, it works. That's good. So anyway, I was shocked. He's, so anyway, I was shocked because he's, he's remember he said uh, so he was at a Yankees game and a, yeah. a guy came up and called his, his daughter a cunt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that actually he spoke about you uh, quite a bit. Then. Yeah, right, right. I'm sure. <laughs> Listen to me, Norm. You don't I'm, age, man. You look good. I look good. Thank. Yeah. You and you look good. Thanks, pal. Yeah, you look real You're good. good you put on a little weight, but it looks yeah. good on you. You look no, I'm, I'm, you I'm work I'm it big. out. My, no, no, it's just fat. You're fat now. 
Well, it's like, but it's it's proportion. For, no, I got abs and shit. <laughs> you listen, I always talk about Norm uh, being a good-looking guy. He always got the. He's quietly he going back. Some... He scored some big ones. Who else should worry about diseases and things like that, right? I mean, you're pretty careful. You wear rubber when you're with the women, or do you go wild and just say, "Fuck it, I'm gonna I'm gonna have sex without a rubber." Do you ever? What do you do? <laughs> when I'm making love, do you ever yell out hamburger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after he comes, he says hamburger. Hamburger. <laughs> well, seriously, do you? How you? How is your sex life, by the way? Because you're single now a long time. We don't. We don't see you in the tabloids. We don't see you with any broads, any women. Nothing. Are you into a commitment? Are you into any kind of committed relationship? No, no, no. no. Nothing. Those days are over. I'll say I just. You know, I just whack off. You, you, you whack off mostly. <laughs> almost, almost only. Yeah. You don't go out on dates. No, I much wow. prefer whacking up. <laughs> See, I always thought you'd be the kind of guy because you like to be home. You're not. You're a recluse. He'd get a, a wife or something. Not huh? a wife. Maybe a tight girlfriend. You know, someone. The whacking up's better. Yeah, you really feel that way. Yeah, because my imagination's better than any fucking reality. <laughs> are you being serious with me? I, I'm are being you really, dead serious. When's man. the last time you had a girlfriend? I don't think I've ever had a girlfriend. I had a wife. She, I guess she was my girlfriend before I married. Right, and after the wife, you That kinda, was it? That was it. You realized I'm a different guy than I thought I was. I'm really a loner. Yeah. You're a loner. Yeah. Do you get lonely? No. I was shocked that you went on Adam's show, Adam Carolla, uh, and you said, Howard, more or less, it seemed like you, you kind of said that I'm responsible for Artie's... Um, heroin abuse. He almost said you're killing Artie. Yeah, and you yeah, said that what I, did he say again? Wait, stop. I thought you what? were on Adam's show. I could play the tape, but I don't need to if you, unless you want to refresh your memory. I, they played me the tape. You kind of said Howard is the cause, and that I oh, even oh, on Adam Carolla's Adam yeah. Carolla's show. You said I yes, was I was talking about of, <laughs> I brought up Artie. Yeah, you brought up Artie. Yeah, I didn't. He did. He did. Out but, of the blue. But, I, but I somehow got <laughs> slammed, and you said I was shocked to hear this. That you felt that I was somehow enabling, and you even said that I killed Hank the Angry Dwarf. Where wow. I, I want, I was sitting good Doug Goodstein. Why don't you, you know come what? And talk about I how did. many times we hadn't committed? You know what? You're yeah. right. You're right. I did say that. Yeah. And I apologize for that. Cause Thank that's you. Not true. I, I yeah, hope, that's a terrible thing I said. I felt horrible that terrible you would say that said. about me. No, I did. I, yeah, I do Were remember you saying Hank. Joking Hank, or what? No, I wasn't joking. But <laughs> you, I, believe I, it. you believed it at the time. <laughs> no, I, the Hank the Angry Dwarf thing. I, I don't believe. I don't know. I, I, I yeah, don't know why no, I said that. I mean, that was that was wrong of me because first of all, I didn't know shit. Right. Uh, but what I was talking about anyways. Right. But no, the Artie thing. To it, explain it to me because if there's something I could be doing, I want to know what I can do. Maybe you got well, information. I'm, no, I'm not Doctor Drew. You know, I don't right. know. But. Um, <laughs> But, um, but you seem to know that day. Yeah, you were very full of well, yourself. Well, sometimes you're on the fucking radio and you say stuff. You, know? you guys know I'm sitting here. No, but I take yeah. this. I, uh, but Artie, you, uh, Artie, pretend you're not here for a minute. Mm. Eat something. <laughs> All right. I, I love Artie. It's funny you think it's, you, uh, it's your problem and not Artie's problem. Well, this is what you said. No. Do you want me to play what you said? Yeah, I'd love to. Really? You listen to it. Because I really want an explanation of this. It, it was very hurtful. And it even got me thinking. I said, you know, Norm's a bright guy. I like you. And I said, gee, if Norm thinks that of me... I have to really sit down and examine myself. And I really, I even went to my psychiatrist. I talked about it. I said, gee, Norm said these horrible things about me. Did you He's talk right. to your psychiatrist? I did. Wait a minute. And you I, said Norm? Norm. <laughs> and he goes, who the fuck is Norm? That guy yeah, I haven't seen him since Dirty Work. Norm? Who yeah. I took three sessions up on Norm. <laughs> and then the shrink, the shrink, wait, let, me, let me play it for you. Maybe, <laughs> right. what, what page is that on, Gary? We have pages now, Norm. We are all computerized. What, what, hold, what on, it, hold on. Yeah. I, I'll find it. It's worth playing. And I want you to explain to me. What you were thinking, because maybe you got an idea here what to do with Artie. It's at uh, Gary Page 2, and it's on the bottom in red. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised to hear these comments, because, you know, even I know, when you worked with Artie, uh -huh. he was doing coke, and you didn't oh, fire No, I never whoa, did coke. Whoa, 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 I never did coke while Don't you I remember you were trying to score coke at I the bar that night? I tried to score coke the first day I ever met him. Yeah. But, but in the movie, as far as I knew, Artie was a complete professional. Yeah, all right, all right. Was, I hit my mark. Here's what you say, <laughs> and, and, and believe me, I'm I'm willing, I'm open to listening to whatever you have to say. Uh, yeah. Norm, what else can we talk about? Uh, we did Celebrity Millionaire. Your show ah, coming up? Ah, here's one. Artie Lang. Artie, yeah. You're friends with Artie. I'm very good friends. Anyway, well, I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, we're going to open the newspaper I, I, or turn on the uh, computer one of these mornings and find out that Artie is not with us anymore, yes? Well, I hope not. He recently went into rehab again, I think. Well, it's outpatient. Outpatient. Right so I don't know why that even means but i hope you know i hope he does good i don't know you know i don't 
it's a very tough position because it's a guy who has problems. We all know guys who have problems, you know? Right. You worked with a guy who knows a whole bunch of guys that have problems. Sure. Camel. <laughs> oh, yeah, Dr. Drew. Yeah, Dr. Drew. Sure. And so, uh, so you know, it's tough and everything. But anyway, he's in a certain position where it seems like the whole, because I went to see his show, you know, mm -hmm. stand-up show. Yeah. People just hand him Jägermeister all the time, drinks. So it's like the, his whole uh, show is enabling him and his whole audience the is enabling is him. lifestyle is not conducive with sobriety. No, it's terrible. It's really... Also, it's you know, and not only are drugs available when your celebrity people give them to you, but also... I would have been a cokehead too if I got two thousand dollars an hour to do construction back in the eighties. Right. And instead, I got nine dollars an hour, and I was like, I'm not going to buy a gram of coke for 110 bucks when I'm not making 110 bucks in a day. Exactly. So he's got the money. Also, his character. His comic character, <laughs> yes, is that of a drug-using, dr heavy drinking guy that's going to die. Right. Right. So right. how does he go on as a comedian without yeah. that persona? Yeah, I told him be a rehab guy. Just you know, call yourself the rehab guy, and it'll be but funny. nothing is more tedious. But you know the thing. No, but he's, at least he'd live. Yeah. I personally, I don't, li I don't like that what they're doing on Stern to him. What are they yeah, doing? I, I mean, obviously he's complicit in it, but I'm saying that. Uh, uh, he doesn't have to be Beetlejuice, or he doesn't have to be. They, you know, there was they had a midget on that show that was drunk and died. I already apologized yeah, for that. Hank, uh, Hank, yeah. Yeah. And, they, and they were telling him, "Hey, drink more, drink, drink." So drink. you think they're? I apologize enabling. for that. Yeah. Of course. They are. Right, so here we go. What uh, What do you mean about Artie? All right, we can apologize about Hank. I'm really Hank. Well, Hank, we. We tried so desperately to get we this guy in hospitals. Saying, don't, and, don't drink. And, no, I believe you. Know, we I, really. I, I honestly. Do you about. remember that, that appearance? But do you remember? No, that, um, yeah. that, uh, do you remember that? Yeah, so I felt bad after I heard that because I do love Artie, and I would do anything to see Artie stop the negative behavior. Uh, I've talked to Artie privately about it. I mean, I don't want to be some guy who jams it down his throat and all that kind of stuff. But you seem to feel that I'm enabling or, or encouraging the behavior, and I'm not. I don't remember hearing. I, th I said the Stern show. Yes. I mean, you feel it's Robin who's doing most of it. But yeah. I'm saying that the show is a, is a creation Yes. that's uh, very real, That that's very... Um, it's, uh, it's, it's at its most interesting yes. when the guest is uh, at his most honest. Yes, so that's true. Artie is probably as honest as you're going to find. Yes, he's true. And as, um, as provocative as you're going to find. Yes. Right? Yes. So then there at four, that makes the show hugely entertaining. That is true. And isn't that what you're going for? Well, I'm always into honesty, but uh, I mean... But how is that enabling him or, or, or encouraging him to do destructive things? Well, I don't know. For, you know, for instance, let me put, let me ask you. This. I don't think you know. Let either. me ask you. I don't this. think anyone knows. No, I just you know. Let I me ask you. Let me ask put you. it out there. But, but, but everyone blames me. No, I'm not blaming. But no. I'm saying when I already uh, threw the thing at Teddy and said, right, right. Yeah. right. Then you didn't play it again for the rest of the day. That's right. I why, didn't. Why didn't you play it? I didn't play it because Artie was so distraught and the, the emotions were so real that I felt that Artie was in a state that I didn't even know. We hadn't even talked afterwards. He left. And I felt that by replaying it, Artie could... I, you have to put it in perspective. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know if Artie was going to go put a bullet in his own head because uh, he was so upset that he did that. And but I then felt you like see, by the way, Teddy has then, apologized. Then when you put it yeah. on on demand and promo the hell out of it. Because I spoke to Artie and we talked over the weekend. And Artie was going to leave the show. Uh -huh. And... Some private things happened between myself and Artie, and which which we have never gone into on the air. It's off the air, private stuff. Yeah. And I felt, in all seriousness, and Artie felt, we made the decision together that we could go on. Artie wanted the audience to see that, but Artie has changed his behavior a lot and has really no, thought no. that whole experience through. So, in all seriousness, hamburger. I, in all seriousness, <laughs> you know, I honestly, Teddy has apologized for forcing me to do that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we, we determined. Artie and I determined it was Teddy's fault <laughs> somehow. So no. it was okay to scream. Yeah. No, so you're, I know what you're, you're in a conflicted place where yeah. you, you. I love Artie. Yes. And I and, and I know, believe me, I, I I listen to the show and I know that you guys love each other. Yes. I I, see it, so. I don't know if he loves me. He told me I'm not his bro, but uh, okay. I love him. I apologize so. like Norm apologized for him. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so what are we what are we really saying now? Well, Rob? listen, Chris, because every think, guest has I to think, comment on this. I thing. think that Norm has disavowed everything he said on Adam Carolla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I disavowed the thing about Hank the Angry Dwarf. But you backtracked, and you now say, no, I don't think you're at fault. What about Adam Carolla? I, I never killed said that. I, I, no, I think he was saying say that. exactly uh, what I'm saying. It's hard to, like, I put all that out there, and now it's such part of the fabric of the show, it's hard for me to get off that roller coaster. Like, I, you're not you're asking, getting, you're you're getting not asking me to do it. Interesting. You're not asking me to do it. No. But I, I feel like it is. it becomes entertaining, and I feel like it's necessary, not for many orders, but just that, you know, you feed, it I feeds th- itself. Listen, I hired Artie on our show. After you're the reason, you're Artie's the reason here. we know this stuff about Artie. And when Artie was hired on the show, Artie wasn't doing any of this shit. Okay. I hired him because he's a funny guy. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. He but can talk was about this. And, and his introduction to Artie, Norm pushed right. him forward because he didn't want to talk about L. McPherson right. and said, hey, <laughs> does cocaine." Right. Yeah. You I didn't say he started. did cocaine. Yeah. I didn't say he did cocaine at the time. This was a thing in the past. But you, you if, if Artie had been pushed. backstage on coke, I would have right. brought him out. And Go, hey, look, uh, right, I ran right. a coat. Oh, it listen. happened two weeks before. So, in other words, <laughs> after this ten minutes have gone by of this discussion about Artie, no one knows anything, right? We don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. No one has well, anything. Well, I guess no one really knows what to do. No. I mean, but it, 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 I don't know. I, I said things probably emotionally. And, uh, well, you I was about very it. emotional at, at this fucking roast that I had to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, because Artie, I thought he was dead. I didn't fucking know. I thought they were telling us. I thought they wanted to do their stoop, their their roast so bad that they weren't, they weren't going to tell us a guy was dead. <laughs> Which is what I thought. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Well, they, you know what? The show does have to go on, Norm. You know that. that That's not what I've heard. No. I felt bad. I've heard the show doesn't necessarily have to go on. <laughs> That's in Canada. Oh. That's why show business in Canada is going nowhere. The show doesn't go on over there. Everything upsets them. So I think we got, I think uh, me and Sag were talking a lot, and we got very depressed that night after the gross. I see, okay. And we talked about Artie a lot, and, and uh, you know, and then I never expected uh, Adam to bring that up. I don't, I, I, I was, look, I should have phoned you guys, I should have phoned Artie, I should never, you shouldn't fucking say things about. No, I just was concerned I have that, done you, that. that you thought that sure. of me. Uh, Norm MacDonald has agreed to go to Caroline's on Broadway. In Manhattan tonight through Saturday. Yeah. This is a ri- what, you, you look. Well, what you're upset about the Carolines? Huh? You like going to Carolines, or you're upset about it? You don't even really want to go to Carolines, do you? <laughs> you're not. You're not no. that thrilled. No. What are you Damn. fucking is talking it, about? Is it good money? <laughs> I uh, no. This is what no. This is what happened. No. Go ahead. I took the red eye last night. Yes. I just got in right. Just now. Just now. Yeah. Right. And I, but I took a sleeping pill so I could sleep on the. Plane. What the fuck is she doing a Sudoku or something? <laughs> <laughs> she, she prepares the news. Just does that? Yeah. I'm oh, listening to you. You were on the plane. You were asleep on the plane. No, I wasn't asleep. I took a sleeping pill you took a and one. did not go to sleep. Oh. Did not fall asleep. So you messed up the dishwasher. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. But the pay was shitty. The pay is shit, but somehow I always had money. <laughs> I don't know why. You yearn for those I've got days. no money now. <laughs> All right, Ralph, you're first up in Jersey. Go ahead. <laughs> Ralph. Norm. How are you doing, baby? Good, Matt. Hey, Hey, uh, first of all, Norm's a great stand-up. I highly recommend his show. I've gone a couple of times. It's really good. All right. And I, you know, I don't. Want, I'm not going to repeat anything that Norm uh, and I have talked. We've talked off the air about Artie, and I don't think you're being 100 percent honest there, Norm. I think you, you know that there's some things you said. I think you. I don't think that you're saying that Howard's responsible for Artie's behavior, but the show just encourages it. Yeah. Well, that's what he just said. And there's no. Well, yeah, but the, and then there's no consequences, and that's where I think so. Like, like Artie falls asleep. What job could you fall asleep at? <laughs> well, yesterday, well, Ralph brings up a good point because yesterday, because every guest has to talk about this now. I think yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chris Rock said, Chris Rock said that, you know, Howard should fire me. That's what he said. You know, uh, it is because if, so, if I didn't have money, I wouldn't be able to. Well, if you weren't so funny, you would be fired. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's the bottom Do you line. recommend that I fire Artie? No, no, no. Artie? But, but, you get away but, with it because you're so funny. Uh, but if Chris no. Rock said that, he's incorrect. That's not the right move. If, 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 if fire there are, friend. there is a job that you can fall asleep at. Sure. Because it's already falls asleep. That's right. <laughs> guy's, sitting, <laughs> guy's sitting right there. Let's go to Debbie. Debbie needs to speak to you, Norm. But is I, I, no, what, I, what do you, how did the move? Howard, Howard. Yeah. Howard. How could the movie be a failure if you return $90 million? Uh, but it wasn't logical what I just said. Uh, Ralph, go ahead. So 
I'm at dinner with Norm once, or lunch or something. We're at a big table, like all these people sitting around. And Norm puts his hand on my leg, not rubbing my leg or anything, uh. just just puts his hand on my leg. <laughs> and, and I don't know, like, it, it was weird, but, you know, Norm's a weird guy. I don't know, it, like, maybe he was fucked up. I don't know. His hand was just, like, on my leg. You didn't and, knock yeah. it away, did no. you? And then, yeah, and then five minutes later, Norm goes, hey, uh, you know, Ralph is a fag. I've had my hand on his leg. He hasn't moved. <laughs> That's how I test people. You test them. I so test you believe people. Ralph is gay. I test people to find out if they're fags, and that's one of my tests. Can you imagine letting a fucking dude grab your leg for five minutes? You mean Ralph didn't say anything? Not a fucking word. Ralph, you're gay. Aren't you the fag for no. grabbing my leg? No, he's Not testing no. you. Test. No, you are a genius. I really mean that's that. You crazy. might be the greatest genius of all time. You are the only one who figured out that Ralph really is gay. Why wouldn't you make Ra Ralph? Why wouldn't you make Norm remove his hand? Yeah, say what do you do? What? I don't know. I found it funny. I didn't know. And if he grabbed your cock, would that have been funny? <laughs> I've been doing? giving Ralph a hand job for twenty minutes. Oh, that was later. Norm, you are a genius. <laughs> he laughed. I love that. Norm blew me too, but I. <laughs> uh, I like how it becomes the other guy now. Uh, let's go to. Let's. Do you miss the days of the sitcom? Do you miss that kind of money, that action? I mean, that was tremendous. I mean, you didn't have to do a whole lot, and you got a lot of money. Right? Uh, he had to do. It. That's a misconception. If you're the star of the show, there's a lot it's for you a to lot do. Of, as a, a supporting actor on a sitcom is literally stealing money. You were stealing money. Yes, but he had a lot. Do you, miss, a, a do you miss the sitcom at all? Had a good job. Did you miss the pay? Do you miss the going to the studio? It's exciting, right? You don't miss it. No, I don't miss. It. I miss. I miss uh, the people. <laughs> <That's a faggot. laughs> but I love Artie. I love Laurie Metcalf. And I love Max Wright. So, right. Um, you don't fun. call Artie that much, do you? To, well, I'd say about once a month. Once a month, you guys speak on the yeah, phone. We, we it's not to, awkward. I try, we try to talk. Is it uncomfortable speaking to Artie now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable. Sometimes you have to, you know, be careful. Uh, you know what you say. Like, <laughs> really? He gets touchy, right? No, no, no. I'm saying the same way that Letterman doesn't want to talk to you. Oh, I see. Yeah, you got four hours to fill, so you got to sometimes be careful. Oh. I see. I see. Really? Even though I have probably nothing. <laughs> I can't imagine what those conversations are. I just can't. Unbelievable. Well, look, you've done it all. You're Norm McDonald. What's the plan for the rest of the day? So you right have nothing to say. You're going to do you've the done show. It you've done you're it all. Norm McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my name. That's when you know the interviews coming on. Oh, so what else? Now what is the game? Says plan? here you're Norm McDonald. What is the game plan for the rest of the day? You're going to do some shows at Sirius. Yeah. yeah After you're done with those shows, in those you're going to take. <laughs> you're going to take a nap. I, I don't think I can take. Taking that, my, my um, hotel room's not ready. They said till four or five. <laughs> you, didn't, you couldn't buy, get the room a day before, and so we'll I be should have, yeah. that might have worked out I better for you. Well, let me ask you, Artie. I was trying to get into it. What I, I didn't want to come right out and say it, but did Norm realize when he hired Artie that he was going to give him, a, get himself a guy that was going to give him a run for his degenerate money? You know what I mean? Like, like it's almost like. You know, you're you're in rehab and you start dating a girl whose father's a coke dealer. Like Artie wants to just do everything Norm does times ten. Well, who do you think the bigger gambler is, Artie or Norm? Norm. Yeah, I think so too. I think I think Norm's got more to play with. Well, I think wait, wait, more wait. Do you gamble. mean more amount or more percentage of what they own? Both. Yeah. Oh, really? You so disagree? I would think that at the time Artie might have been more of a larger percentage of his money he might have been gambling with. Well, I, again, I was looking at some of Artie's book last night. He does tell a story about how he bet six hundred dollars when he had eighty dollars in the bank, and um, that, that's a you know you got to remember back when you have no fucking money, you're going to bet three times what you have, ten times what you have in the bank, three times what you make a week. Now Norm's not here, so we can talk a little in a little bit more detail about this. What did you think of his explanation about what he had said about Hank and the other stuff on uh, the other show? I don't know. Norm's not really a malicious guy. I mean, I think that's what he thought, and then today he doesn't think that, and. You know, I, I don't give Norm as much shit because he's not that well thought out. You know what I mean? He's a very stream of consciousness guy. But um, he, he's sort of in that same thing like Bob Saget was, you know, at Chris Rock, you guys got to help Artie. And, and uh, I think he sort of realizes everybody's got to help Artie if Artie needs help. Now, Norm's also, you know, you, you ever want to do a movie again? I don't care. You know, he's yeah. got that sort of attitude. 
Some people put. Right, I would be a wreck without my wife. Bullshit. <laughs> you sure would. How, how, long, how long have you been? I'd be right next to Artie. <laughs> how, long, how long have you been? Married? Artie'd be my fucking sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> That's how, fair. Man. How long have you been married now? I've been married, I think, eleven years. Eleven years. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah. You're doing eleven great. Eleven blissful years. Yeah, yeah. You do look good. I'll tell you that. I'm, yeah, you I look mean, good. Artie, I'm gonna do it. You think, you've been around. You, you actually lived through the Chris Farley thing. Which is a sad I've thing. I've been through, yeah. I've, yeah. I've, do you see a lot of the same traits with Artie? I see some of it. Some yeah, of it. What are you it. supposed to do? Everybody keeps telling us what. There's to nothing do. you can do. Nothing. Right. Thank There's nothing you. To, no, no. Here's what you can do. Good. Yeah, uh, the artist's gonna be like, I can't believe this guy is gonna say this to <laughs> my God, face. God. The only thing you can do <laughs> is fire him. And what does that do? Well, Chris Farley's not dead because he's a coke addict. He's dead because he's a coke addict who can get his hands on ten grand. Yeah. yeah, but so Artie could get his hands on <laughs> so 10 grand without me. Artie could get his hands on 10 grand. Sure. No, no, I, mean, no, Artie, I know what he's if, saying. If no. Artie lost his job, yeah. In, uh, if he was really fucked up, he'd right. be broke in three months. Yeah. Right. But he's no, I, I know what he's saying. I mean, listen, my therapist, <laughs> who I love, is, uh, so it's is my saying fault? that. No, no, no. He's just no, he's not. That's and not the and point. when he's I saying, look at Chris Farley, when I go, when I, the people I'm really mad with, that still I'll never forgive, are the ones that. Fucking just got him together. It's one thing to get a guy sober for himself, but every there were so many people in Farley's life that literally just got him sober enough to work and make money for them. Right, right. And that's why he's dead. Name them. I'm not gonna name them. <laughs> but I don't understand something. So it's like, oh, we got to get him ready for, th and it's like, oh, he got out to rehab on Wednesday and he's doing a movie on Monday. Right. That's yeah, but know. let me understand <laughs> it's something. Like, so it's their fault that he died. It's not their fault, but they are, they are. If it, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, in, I'm not even gonna say enablers. enablers. What, what? What's, what's the word when you're, uh, when you. Your friend murders somebody. Accessory to the family. They're, they're definitely accessories. Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, I know for a fact. I work with Artie. Because you just I, wanted to work, you know. I love working with Artie, and we have a great time together. You guys have a gr uh, great time. So, you're so telling me I should right, fire right. Artie? I got a question. Chris, could I have a ride I'm, home? I'm just saying. <laughs> I have a question. No, no. I know what he's saying, and I don't blame Artie him. Artie has never. We go through this all the time. Artie has never fucked up to the point he's fireable. Well, I miss days. I, I mean, no. But come on. everybody misses a day here and there. You've Not never in here. been consistently. Okay, then, so, so you, know, you, you would never call yourself, got to you're, the warning track. You're a functional drug addict. Well, that's what well, it except is. that I, I, I miss I, a I week have friends once. that have been on crack for. 20 years. I, I'm not a crack. 30 right. years. Right. But heroin's worse. That are, 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 are like electricians and sheet metal and like... Pilots. Yeah. I mean, they live with their mothers and stuff <laughs> like that. Right. But, but, they're they, able to but they actually make it to the job right. long enough. And I, I know a cop who's been, you know... So if you listen, have... But the reason thing, listen, listen, is, what happened so, to so me, it affected my work in a sense that... The last time I fucked up, I couldn't make it to the, to the Bob Saget roast, which I promised us. I would. I know, but still... But the one the one week three years ago, I didn't come in here without calling you. You know, I mean, that's fireable. That's fireable. That's Most jobs True. would fire you for that. Well, but, I, don't but know. I, don't, I don't get that uptight well, about that. But did we know it was heroin then? No. No. We actually thought you had a problem. Who the hell thought knew? I knew it was heroin. I'm not even here. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not even here. Why didn't you talk? I don't even know if I'm serious. I'm Please. like, I knew it was heroin. You know I didn't know it was heroin. When Artie, Artie hasn't me. been here all week. Each time Artie tells me Coke's that he's... Coke's a day. Coke, two days. <laughs> yeah, but each time... What do we know about drugs? Call me naive. What do you know? There's call... drug addicts in here every day. <laughs> call me naive. And I know you're trying to be funny, but call me naive. But every time he's called in sick, I believed he was sick. Now, for, I the, did. Last, not... for the last few I times, I said I to everybody, I think Artie's using. But I wasn't Who the sure. Who sick in show business, really? <laughs> right. <laughs> really? I was sick are you in show business? Did you I never had a cold you know, or a like, radio show? You never had I was sick when I was a longshoreman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I, I was sick when I worked at Red Lobster. <laughs> All right, so, Artie, what you're saying is if you stage. ever call in the sick again, you're on hell. No, I can't say that, but uh, you could assume it. I wouldn't right. be mad listen, if you assumed it. I don't mean it. to make this all about Artie. No, I know, but I, uh, listen, I'm not mad that he's saying that. As a matter of fact, and I don't think you should fire me, but I don't know what to do. Don't fire him. <laughs> you don't I mean, know what to do. Well, you, you. When you saying, talk about Farley, you used to say. I love Farley. Yeah, I know you did, and I, I thought he was great. But the thing is, I didn't know the guy. But you used to be the, the funniest sketch I ever saw the guy do was when he was the Chippendales dancer, and you hate that sketch. You said it was uh, they were using him. I don't see that. Here's the thing: the yeah. the at 
The sketch is funny. I'm right. not going to sit here and say it's Farley funny. dancing as a chicken girl dancer isn't funny. Yeah. But at the end of the sketch, the guy comes up to Farley and goes, uh, you're fat and disgusting right. and blah, blah, blah. So it's Farley standing next to uh, Patrick, Patrick, Swayze. Patrick Swayze. Well, guess what? If the guy goes to Patrick Swayze and goes, you're just not our type. We like our dancers to be more like so-and-so here. It's, it's still funny. Right. And Farley feels better about himself. But this guy's fat. He's naked. He's standing there. And you're, he just danced for you. Right. <laughs> he's fucking, fucking fat. He's dancing. He damn near has a heart attack. Let him win the fucking thing. Well, you know what? Though? Like when they I would write me a, ske- a slave sketch, yeah. I go, yeah, I'll do the slave sketch if the slave fucking rules the world at the end of the fucking sketch. <laughs> well, this is why. This is you your what, dignity is but, what you're Yes. Saying. But this is great, though, because I, I do want to talk to Chris about this. But you're saying it hurts Farley's feelings? I'm saying Farley had a thing. A lot of Farley's problems were connected to the fact that he really felt. You know, and, and and guess what? All of us, every, every guy in here that comes into money and whatever, and that didn't get laid in high school or whatever, <laughs> you you know, he felt ugly. He didn't yes. feel attractive. He didn't feel like people really wanted to be around him. And that sketch kind of fed into that shit. All right, fair enough. Can I just How's say that? one thing about yes. the sketch? I know the sketch. Funny I know, motherfucker. I know the guy who wrote the sketch, Jim Downey, who you know. Right. Right. So Downey is a friend of mine because I met him doing. I love that movie with him, and he's a real bright guy. And of course, Chris is one of the funniest minds ever. But he told me about that, and he said people would say exactly what you said. It sh- it should have ended. And he said the reason the sketch is um, unique is that everybody thinks okay, they're going to give it to the fat guy. He just and this is where he's being cruel a little bit. But he says the funny part is it's not that ending. It's like no, we're taking Patrick Swayze, and then he's like cool with it, and the guy insists on telling him why. Well, we're taking him because usually the dancers are in good shape. You're a disgusting slob. You're fat. Right. Just, I don't, don't know. You know, you know which you... is all well and good if you're right. in a fat suit or something. Jack yeah. and but Gleason to a, due to a fucking living person. Right. I know. Sucks. Man. I mean, there are a lot of guys who did. <laughs> Chris Farley did physical humor. And the fact that his fatness was a a an asset in a sense in doing his physical. Well, Chris humor. is saying leave it at that. You don't have to have the ending. Uh, you, where know, it's I, like... you know, I like I like Danny DeVito. Right. You know, I like Danny DeVito. They never mention he's short in any fucking movie. Right. <laughs> Not even twins. He's like, fuck you. Right. I'll do your movie. But Danny, take this short shit out. Danny was the piece of <laughs> shit left over from Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Twins, and it's hysterical. And I'm sure Danny has those feelings inside of himself, but he—that's not the reason. Yeah, but that, they, what they do when you know, I, you know, there's some decent Danny DeVito movies, and he's funny in Taxi. Right. There's 800 things to make fun. Why go to the obvious, obvious. last All thing? Right, fair but enough. guess what? You're on late radio. What do you do? Six hours a day? Yes. Of course you think. Go to the obvious thing. You got all this time to fill. You but if you had right. a one fucking hour a week, you could do you, better. You'd you fucking, could rise. You would, you would never go there. And you, you had two weeks to write. Right. And, right. You right. would never go there. I would go there. Uh, look, <laughs> I don't care. I don't give a shit about it. <laughs> you know, the ugly girl doesn't want to play the ugly girl and have her looks maligned. But I was that guy on the show every now and then. All the time. Yeah, every now and, and then I would just like pull a sketch. You can't give that it, it to says, her. It says here you have... Are you yeah. fucking crazy? Yeah. It says here you have... So does Chris have that vibe with Howard, but he has it with Artie as well. First right. thing he says when he walks in is, hey, I got an Artie show. <laughs> exactly. So clearly he knows what's been going on. But what did you think of his take on what to do with Artie? And he talked about it with Farley a little bit and going down that path. Is it is it a situation where everyone else knows better yet who's going to, you know, who's going to do what? I guess you can look from the outside and guess at what's going on. And again, you know, Howard, Howard and I said the same thing like we, you know, we didn't know Artie was on drugs till after everything fell apart and he told us he was on drugs and then he says, "Okay, now I'm going to get help and I'm getting better." So, I mean, we're just going to fire Artie? And I really wonder like when Chris had his TV show or any kind of like regular type thing where he had employees if he had a guy that was regularly producing and doing great, and then he's a drug addict, is he getting rid of him? Well, based on what he said today, I yeah. I, think I would know because he even said, I, I love, he goes, I know guys that have been on crack, coke for 20 years, electricians, plumbers, you know, well, he also, a cop, you know, a cop. The other, the other thing he said, which was great, he's like, you know, one or two days, that's coke, but a whole week, clearly it's heroin. Like, it came as right. no surprise to him. But uh, Artie rolled with that as well. Now, let's talk about how Chris... 
gets under Howard's skin. I mean, did you book him knowing that the wedding was coming sometime soon, or no, that just no, no, happened no. to work out? They call up and they. This is what I didn't even have to call them. They call up and they go. Chris's HBO special is, you know, this Sunday night, so can we book him a couple of days before? So I don't put two and two together with the wedding. Even when Chris came in this morning, I do remember his infamous line, um, you know, can't believe you're going back to Shawshank when Howard said he was getting married again. But I didn't book him, you know, to tweak Howard. I, I probably didn't even see it coming that much. I figured he'd crack a joke or two and it'd be done. He was definitely getting under Howard's skin. But the great part about it was it gave Howard the chance to sort of reflect I'd say he's a different guy because he was that guy. Howard was Chris Rock, you know, four years ago, five years ago. Howard was Chris Rock. You're stupid if you get married. Don't ever fucking do it again. Don't go back to Shawshank. And Howard started that by basically saying, well, I would have invited you to my wedding, but your wife would never have come. And then he talked about how he was worried that Chris would just goof on him the whole time. Yeah, I think the, the biggest issue is that Howard, and Chris, Howard loves Chris. He doesn't see him socially. Most of the people that are coming to the wedding are people that Howard knows. So, But we were talking about, uh, as soon as we went to commercial break, we started having that conversation some more, and I was reminding Howard that not only did he laugh at my wedding, he laughed at every wedding of every guy that he'd ever been at, that, you know, every, every wedding that he'd ever gone to, if people had been here, he laughed at those people. And the legendary one was he went to Donald Trump's wedding, and Trump talked about this on our show. The, Howard's walking down the red carpet doing interviews. They said, how long do you give it? Howard says, three months. And Trump told us that he and Marla Maples were upstairs watching TV. She saw that. She got mad at Trump, and she wouldn't fuck him on, on their wedding night. Now, when you say he's laughing at you, what do you at your wedding, what do you mean? Like, oh, you don't know what you're getting into. You should, you know, yeah, fine. Go get married. You know, join the rest of us in shackles. And does that make you think twice about what you're doing back then? No, no. R really, it just sort of hurts your feelings. You know what I mean? It's just sort of like, hey, I'm getting married. I love this person. You know, you have you, your thing is your thing. And... You know, what are you what are you pissing on my parade for? And do you think Chris hurt Howard's feelings? Yeah, I, I would say probably a little bit. I'd say I don't think he made Howard think twice in this. You know, Howard clearly loves Beth. They clearly want to get married. That's what he wants to do. But I think it's sort of like, well, you know, what every person in that situation says. Well, that may be true, but you don't know us. That's exactly the, you know that's how I felt, and I'm sure that's how Howard feels. Denise in Miami, welcome to the wrap up show. Hey. Miami, welcome to the wrap-up show. Hey there. I just want to comment um, about how Chris Rock came off as incredibly sensitive when he was talking about his defense of Chris Farley. Okay. Wanted to know what you guys thought about that. What do you mean when you say sensitive? You Like it's a sore subject for him? Yes, a sore subject and just a genuinely sensitive guy. Well, hes I don't know if you heard that part, Garrett. Chris Rock said... The famous uh, Chippendale sketch right. that Farley was in. I heard that. Okay, so he said like it was. He didn't like the ending where they made fun of Farley for being fat, and he was also upset with people who he didn't want to name who got Chris better to a point where but, he could work again, but didn't care I about. I think he his meant it more as a comedic uh, well, th there's cr critique than a than, than a uh, worried about Chris. There's two different issues going on here. The, the first thing is he was talking about the Chippendale sketch comedically, but was saying at the end of the day, you're putting a guy out there, you're taking a fat guy, taking his shirt off, making him dance around like a goofball, and that's got to hurt his feelings. I guess I wonder if this is Chris's interpretation or if Chris Farley, I, I mean, uh, yeah, Chris Rock's interpretation, or Chris Farley ever said, God, I hate doing that. Do you know what I mean? That would make a bigger difference. Like, I don't know if Chris is just thinking that it hurt Farley's feelings, or if he knows it hurts Farley's feelings. And then the second thing, John, that you were talking about, which I do understand being upset about, is that, yeah, they'd send Farley to rehab for 15 days, he'd get out on Sunday, and like Monday, okay, we got to go shoot this movie. And, you know, you got to give a guy time to get his shit back together. Did you think that's the only part where he was sensitive, Denise, or throughout the whole interview? No, I think, well... That's the part that I found him the most sensitive, and to me, made Chris Rock an, a likable guy just that much more likable. Well, yeah, I mean, it definitely shows a different side of him, and that's what's so great about Chris. He can move in three seconds from doing that rap to immediately just cutting you apart. I thought he was real sensitive uh, about the pussies, like, ATM line. <laughs> that's what I found him most. And by the way, t talking about sensitive, I thought, 
a part where he was really hitting Howard hard that was one of the funniest uh, premises that. ever yeah. was when he goes, yeah, you know, I live in the neighborhood. I see Beth walking around, <laughs> and I notice her. She doesn't have that look like, I'm with the old guy, but I'm available. The I'm with the old guy look. <laughs> and he just wouldn't let go of that. He's like, Artie, you know the look. You've seen it. Howard, you've been in here. You've seen it in here. I'm with the old guy look, but I'm available. <laughs> Thanks for your I think call. that got in Howard's skin a little. I, I think so, too. Well, he said right afterwards, you're my favorite comedian. You're a vicious prick. <laughs> so it definitely dug a little bit. Steve in Vegas. You're on Chris in Long Island. You're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, Chris. Hey, I want to disagree with Benji. I think Chris Rock was absolutely talking about how bad he felt for Farley uh, and not talking about the sketch. Uh, the sketch was whatever, but... But I think, he, I think he was saying that the sketch made Farley feel bad about himself. Right, exactly. And then Benji was just saying he didn't like the sketch because it didn't work the other way. I, I thought, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought he thought he was saying, which Artie was saying, it was the opposite based on what the writer said, that Chris was just saying that's the obvious. It was kind of like a black guy doing a stereotypical, like, uh, like a blackface character or something. Yeah, Chris had so many great lines this morning. He's like, you know, He's awesome. line, he goes, uh, sure, you want me to play the slave? I'll play, on the, I'll play the slave on a slave ship as long as at the end of the sketch I rule the world. You know what I mean? Like, he always wants to have the upper hand. He had so many good lines, and he and when Sal came in, though, he just looked like such a dick. Again, I mean, he is such a racist. Well, you're leading me to my next topic. Not that Sal is a racist or anything like that, but Sal comes in with a story about meeting... He's only been here, you know, he was here a couple months Fucking ago. Fucking anyone new? No, he's still got the same girlfriend, but he said it's kind of funny. His kids are asking him if he's going to marry the girlfriend now, mm -hmm. if he's going to have more kids with her. Oh, that, just, that'll tell, freak him out. He was just telling me that he still goes through the weird thing where he goes to the restaurant. And sometimes they don't know if it's his daughter. daughter, and that's always creepy. And then sometimes he said when they think it's his daughter, they'll say, yeah, and then they'll start making out. Yeah, I get nervous, too. Like, Beth and I took uh, the kids to uh, lunch the other day, and uh, the waiter said to me, oh, your whole family's here. Now, I'm thinking to myself, is he thinking oh, my she's daughters? one of my daughters, or does, she, does he think this is my girlfriend? <laughs> right, this is, and I right. go, oh, I hope he doesn't say anything like, all your girls are so beautiful. But he didn't. Well, I was talking, Bob was talking about how weird it is. I said he's going to end up in that. There's a column in National Enquirer where they do uh, daughter or girlfriend. Right, right. It's and, a game. Now. And I, go, I got to tell you, I always lose. Yeah, me too. I go, oh, that's got to be Billy Joel's daughter. <laughs> hey, I must look young because I'm telling you, I went with my daughter to a museum, and they asked if we were both students. So I don't give a shit. They yeah, look, they you thought you had gone back to school that, after you retired. After be, after I retired from working. How you look phenomenal. You don't look like a student. You look Dude, phenomenal. I, the woman looked up and said, "Are you both students?" And I once took my daughter, my daughter Deborah, on vacation with me, and she was about nineteen at the time. And we went and we we're sitting and eating dinner, and the waitress came up and said, um, "Oh, romantic evening for the two of you." So, and my daughter threw up. And said, that's disgusting, and you go explain to the waitress that I'm your daughter. Well, I don't know why, but a while ago I was with somebody, and they said to me, how old is Howard? Uh-oh. This is going to depress me. Go ahead. And I said, your age. Yeah. And then they said, and how old is Beth? Right. <laughs> and I, I said, I don't really know, but I think... 34. I, I remembered that there was a 19-year age gap, <laughs> and so then I was like, I guess she's 34. Right. And they said... Well, Howard looks about in his 30s. He did say oh, that. Thank and he God. Said, All right. I said, so then they're a perfect match. Right. But then he looked at me and he said, so are you going to go run around with a 20-year-old? So that's yeah. a compliment to you. <laughs> you should, believe me. You look good. Hey, there's one a compliment to you. Do you it. should, believe me. You look good. Hey, there's I, one recently I got carded in an R-rated movie. I told you, I go to this one liquor store and they always card me <laughs> do they really and, and every time when really? the girl i'm telling you what your address. when the girl looks at the date of birth she's like what and i'm like geez you're really making my day because she doesn't believe the date you of do birth. look young you don't have any wrinkles that's why well, it's the Botox. Yeah. The, the other thing. Where is, is Bob Shagger? That's it. That's the whole. That was his. That was Will's entire. Uh, yeah, that he has kids I, and he has. That's a, one other thing in there that I thought was interesting. I guess that? he commented for whatever reason. It said that he thought that Artie's heroin use was, and the word was retarded. <laughs> it is. Hey, Artie thinks that. I'm gonna get Bob. So maybe we'll do an intervention. But when was it? Well, yeah, I mean, it's you know. When is it not retarded to yeah, do heroin? Yeah, Ar Artie knows that. 
Artie knows it's retarded. Just, you know, it's the only retarded. Hey, Bob, Artie knows it's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you talking behind my back? I can't believe you're talking behind Artie's. Right now, are you? No. You just don't time. I wish you could have fucking heard uh, Zagat on the phone with me before Dirty were going, you're not going to take anything to Canada, right? You're not going to get... Well, if trouble. you'd have just brought some coke over the border, we would have been shut down. <laughs> yeah, and that's we all. Had to, and we had to call, like, uh, Kevin <laughs> Farley would have been in the so role. nervous. <laughs> I don't blame smug, him. You're not going to smuggle anything. I'm like, of course not. Oh, oh, he's not cool because... Of course he's... No, no, no. Cool. I feel... Like a, I felt for him. Who knows with you? I, was, I felt for him is the point. Right. You didn't feel for me. You were, we, when I Norm did. and I hung out with you. When Norm McDonald and I went uh, to play pool with you one night, he said he's totally clean. We go to some place at Fairfax at Santa Monica upstairs. We're shooting pool. He's got some little Latino guy bringing him shots of scotch. And he's going in the back with this guy. And we know he's doing coke. And Norm goes, he I doesn't look clean to me. I wasn't doing coke. I wasn't doing coke. What were you doing? I, I was drunk. And Mescaline? <laughs> well, this is right after the audition. <laughs> it was literally, literally that day. And we I didn't you say to him in the audition, can you not do drugs, please? <laughs> do you have any other skills? Any hobbies? I got, drunk on, my ass. I got drunk on my ass when we were shooting pool. And I asked the kid for coke. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the kid's number. He said, oh, but I can get you some. And the next morning I woke up in the hotel, hung over, and I threw it out. I'm like, what am I doing? And you pretended you were clean still. We didn't even, you acted like I none of that happened. I was clean the whole fucking time. You were. You were actually pretty good, except for that night that they all went to the strip club. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, that was really what happened bad. then? Uh, it was, uh, how are you? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> right was, out of the we, box. We might as well hear it all. Yeah, right. <laughs> what do you do? Well, it was uh, you know, a couple of the guys uh, started hanging out, and uh, the wonderful uh, Chris Farley yeah. and uh, Norm McDonald all went to Perfect the Perfect influences. Yeah. I know, right? Farley Chris was Farley. Out. There was too much before Farley died. They were he... all practicing on how to fill their lungs with fluid. That did, day. You do, <laughs> did you do coke with uh, Farley? No, no, no. But he had a, he one of those handlers with him. Bruce Stingray gave him a handler who was so easy to duck. I mean, the guy was just like, look. Well, I don't know if it came right from the management company. Well, I don't know, but <laughs> the guy, I mean, the guy, the, the, guy, the guy, the guy, you could go, look, there's a bird. <laughs> you know, and uh, we all went to the strip club, and Farley had strippers hanging off his arms, and like they were all like into them. And were we you in all, the special room? Because I we went in that back room. The we brass had all, rail. And I had a and I the whore room. Yeah. The brass rail was called, and uh, I was with a major Buffalo Bill at the time. I won't say his name, but it was I was I was a sport fan. I was happy to meet him. He was making out with this chick. And uh, I, that's when I convinced the chick to come back to my hotel and blow me. And I thought it was. And, did did and she I thought, do it? Did yeah, she, she, I got a blowjob from her. I and never I thought, knew that. I thought As a that, director, I was supposed to know that. <laughs> so I, got guys talk. Guys talk. I got a blowjob. You know, girls are so different. Like, they never go, man, I went out. I got this guy to fuck him. I got it off him. You know? But I thought I was, uh, well, I thought it was so smooth. And then we figured out in the Canadian money that I'd given her. Like it was eight hundred dollars. I did. So you had not been late. If I'm correct, you had not been late for a very long time when you did. Yeah, no, I right? re I was through rehab. I was, you know, I went up there very horny. Did you get late in rehab? No, no, I don't know. You come on, it's hard to pull off. You no, got to be a list on that, well, right? Some Artie? people can do it. I can't get laid out of here. You telling me you were with Farley and you didn't get high with him? No, I didn't. Look, what? What? What am he I might have not been. Uh, Chris he might have not he, been getting high that night. He was had a hard week. He claimed he wasn't doing any drugs, and he was he drinking though. <laughs> he was trying uh, really hard. Yeah, he, he really was. In the strip club, he might have had some drinks, but I, I think that everybody was really... See, everybody around him was very protective of him, including yeah. Norm. Yeah. And uh, Sandler, who was up there for a few days, was very protective of him. Like, yeah. don't fuck around with him. It must be great to be treated like a baby. A baby. Everybody's you know, watching you know. And he was like a baby anyway. He was right. like a little kid. He would either be real aggressive and hilarious, like a Christ, Gleason. was he funny, though. And then he would oh go, and God. then he would go, was that okay? Was that, was that fine? But it's what's like great a, about like it is like a little boy. Like, like literally, he's got people like Sandler has I mean, to watch out for like him. like huge and... stars watching yeah. out for him. That's kind of a cool move. I have that. I have Stamos and Coulier. Yeah. <laughs> nobody, ever, nobody ever watches out for me. You know what I mean? I would if you my problems. You don't yeah, but I'm problems. saying I just get I get critiqued. What am I, I have say? so You're many women too much in my chess? life. What am I going to tell you? I am. Do you get a hard time having three girls? Do you you find yourself because you, I get critiqued like Dad? Why oh, would you say that? I'm the it's worst. Like, I, I, when I blew up at the um, when I blew up at the guy with the TV set yesterday, yeah. my daughter really laid it on me. What was that? I, I just I lost it. I got this TV set that don't work for years already, and the guy I put it a whole screen and a whole thing, and it just pisses me off. Every time we would try to watch it, so I called the guy and I was like, you know, hey, I was honest with him. I go, I'm pissed, and you know, 
Oh, you don't have to react that way. You yeah, know, I get that every day. Yeah, they think I'm a hothead. This right. and the other thing, and everything I do is wrong. But do you, you know? are you like zero to sixty anyway? You yeah, just like I'm a zero to sixty. It's guy. bad for our hearts. I, I hear. Well, you, what you're like that too? Yeah, I'm not. You get pissed off at everything. Yeah, the pool remote didn't work, and I just put it all in. <laughs> How <laughs> dare he? <laughs> no, I don't mean like that. I wasn't like I was crazy. <laughs> It's just they you just always, get emo- you get you get angry. I get fast. angry. Everyone was watching TV. I was exci- I wanted it to be a good day for everyone, and then that was just. Bummed. But this is a Sunday. Right. You call um, the guy. Yeah, right? yeah, Sunday. Oh. That's where is he a religious you? guy? No. I don't care what church you're in. I don't care. I'm mean, <laughs> over here and fix in my TV. Uh, it's just every Sunday. I, my daughter goes, you know, it's a Sunday. You shouldn't bother him. And I, or, or, or Beth might have even said it's a right. Sunday. You shouldn't bother him. And I, and I said, um, well, I'm having a shit day. Yeah, you're bothered. Why can't everybody else have a shit day? Drag you down with me. Right. What? Um, so what's going on with you? What is this movie?